Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video, we're going to continue considering the subject of AC theory, and we're going to continue filling in our worksheet, as you can see on the screen here. We're going to be concentrating on the line here that talks about waveforms and wave diagrams, and we're going to be seeing how current and voltage waveforms are affected by our three different loads, those resistive, inductive, and capacitive loads. So if you haven't already done so, please click the link in the description below to download the worksheet. And if you want any further information on AC theory, then please check out the playlist that I've created that shows these videos in the correct order. So let's have a look at those waveforms. So as you can see on the screen here, I've got two waveforms representing what's going on inside our purely resistive load. You can see here we've got the voltage waveform, which I've outlined in red, and here you can see we've got the current waveform, which I've outlined in blue. Now, when we look at these two waveforms, it's a very, very interesting situation because what you can see is that the voltage and the current are rising and falling in perfect, what we could call, unity. The technical expression for this is that the voltage and the current are in phase. Now what that means is that they are both hitting the, the same kind of significant points along their uh, waveform, along their cycle, at the same moment in time. So if we look here, we can see that the current waveform is at uh, zero, so it's at zero amps, and the voltage waveform is also there at zero volts. And then when the voltage waveform hits its maximum positive peak, you can see there that it's at its maximum at 90 degrees and the current is reaching its maximum of one also at 90 degrees. Now these are just values that I've just put on here for the sake of convenience to show what the waveform is doing. So here the voltage waveform is peaking at two volts and the current waveform is peaking at one ampere. And then we can follow that through and we can see that these all line up with each other. So once we get to the maximum negative peak that the current and voltage waveforms are reaching, they're both reaching that at 270 degrees before they both tail off over here at 360 degrees. They're both at zero and then the cycle starts again. Now, so far, so simple. And what we can do is we can take this kind of image from the screen here, this waveform of the voltage and the current, and we can transfer that into our worksheet. So we'll fill in the first box on the worksheet for this video and it looks a little bit like we've got on the screen now. So that's gonna sit in there. So I suggest you pause the video and copy that up and, uh, into your worksheet. So at this point, this is a very simple looking exercise. The waveforms line up with each other, as we might expect. We'd expect when the voltage is at a peak, the current will also be at a peak. We'd, that seems like normal behavior for an AC circuit. However, when we start to look deeper into this, we start to find out that actually, these two waveforms, the current waveform and the voltage waveform, can start to fall out of phase with each other. And that starts to look a little bit like this. We can actually see that the current waveform can start to fall so that it is out of unity with the voltage waveform. And it can actually end up going in either direction like this. Now what causes this to happen is starting to bring into our circuits those other types of load. So, for example, if we have a purely inductive load, then the voltage and the current waveform will look like this. Now, this is significant because what's happened is that the current is still rising and falling at the same rate as the voltage, so it's still got the same frequency as each other. However, they are hitting their significant points at completely different times now. And what we can see, we can actually look at that. So when the voltage waveform is at zero here, so when we're at zero volts, you can see that actually the current waveform is down here at its maximum negative peak. And actually, if we look along the x-axis for when the current waveform hits zero, it happens here at 90 degrees. Now that's a really important thing to understand, the fact that the current is actually kind of fallen behind the voltage and we have a special name for that relationship and as the video progresses that will become a little bit more obvious why we say this but what we say is that in a purely inductive circuit the current lags the voltage by 90 degrees. 
So if we look over here at another significant point on the current and voltage waveform, you can see that the current is reaching its maximum positive peak at 180 degrees, whereas the voltage reaches its maximum positive peak at 90 degrees. So the difference between these two values, 90 and 180, is obviously 90 degrees. So you see the current is reaching its maximum positive peak 90 degrees after the voltage has reached its maximum positive peak. So that's the kind of waveform relationship between current and voltage. That's what it looks like when we express this as a wave for a purely inductive circuit. Now remember, that is a circuit that contains no resistance and no capacitance. Now, if you think about this logically for a moment, you can see that actually you'll never get a perfect inductor. You'll never get a pure inductor. Because if you think about what we said the structure of an inductor looks like in a previous video, we basically said it's just a coil of copper wire. That's all an inductive load is at, at its kind of fundamental level. So of course, because of the very nature of its structure, because it's made out of a piece of, generally speaking, copper wire, that copper wire will always have some amount of resistance. However small it might be, it will always have some value of resistance. And so that means that in practice, you will never get this exactly 90 degree lagging relationship between the current and the voltage. However, for the purposes of our understanding and developing our uh, deep rooted understanding of AC theory, we need to just consider the fact, acknowledge the fact that in a purely inductive circuit, the current lags the voltage by 90 degrees. So now what we can do is we can take what we've got on the screen here, we can take this kind of relationship and we can drop that into our worksheet. Now this one's a little bit tricky to draw out. So what I suggest you do is when you draw this, draw your voltage sine wave in there and then just line up the significant points. So at the start of the graph, the current will be at its maximum negative value. When the voltage is reaching its maximum positive peak, uh, you can put that mark in just here to show that the current waveform is at zero and then just keep on marking off all of these significant points on the current waveform and then join them up with each other. Uh, it might take a couple of attempts but if you mark out kind of these five significant points on your worksheet you'll be able to draw that in and that'll help you to understand the way that current and voltage behave as a waveform. So now let's think about this logically. What do you think is going to happen if we consider a purely capacitive load. So now we're moving away from the purely resistive, we're moving away from the purely inductive, and we're looking at a purely capacitive load. What do you think is going to happen to the relationship between the voltage and the current now? Well, you don't need to wait in suspense because we'll have a look now. We can see that as the circuit becomes more and more capacitive, the current goes in the opposite direction like that until we get to this point here where what we've got on screen now is a representation of what's happening with a purely capacitive circuit. So that's a circuit that has no resistance and no inductance. And you can see that now the current is actually kind of reaching its significant points before the voltage is reaching the same significant point. So you can see here that when the current is at its maximum positive, the voltage is at zero and the voltage doesn't reach its maximum positive point until 90 degrees after the current has reached its maximum positive point. Now the name we give to this relationship or the way we describe this relationship is we say that the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees. So the current is leading the voltage by 90 degrees in a purely capacitive circuit. So what we can do now is we can copy that down into our worksheet and it'll go into the box looking something like this. And the same kind of tips apply. What you want to do is just have the significant points on here marked for the voltage and the current waveforms so that you can then mark that in. So draw the voltage waveform first and then line up these significant points along here and you'll be able to copy that down into your worksheet to help you visualize what's happening with the waveform diagram. Now, the reason that the current and the voltage start to fall out of phase with each other in inductive and capacitive circuits is kind of a little bit more advanced than we'd normally look at for the purposes of the course that we're looking at at the minute. But in a future video, we will consider the reasons why that happens. So our worksheet should now look like this. We can see there we've got our three different waveforms 
And in the next video in this series, we're going to look at how we can describe those waveforms as phasor diagrams. Thank you very much for watching.